the Asbury Park Music Foundation and presented by Mogo. It's one more with Brian Erickson. You ready? <laughs> Each week, we bring in a couple new guests, we sit them down at the table, we find out why they do what they do. And this week is a little bit of an exception, because normally we do bring in about like one or two guests. This week we have five, because uh, we're doing, a, I guess it's a, a 3143 artist management takeover. I, I, that's exactly what it is, yes. Yeah, I that guess is. so. Great job, Brian. Thanks. <laughs> no, it's a 3143 so having takeover. Uh, yeah, so, so five of their, uh, I don't know, you want to call them is clients? I don't really know. What do you like, want to say, so KL? Cool. Oh, clients. What do you want to call them? By the clients, roster. victims. <laughs> a good, a good fraction of the roster. Rost, is roster is a good word. Yeah. Roster. I the hardly roster. even know her. Oh. Anyway. There we go. And and, and uh, what, what? Don't look at me like what that. What more perfect introduction to Chris Dubrow? Hi, Brian. Yeah. And we also have Jesse McCormick. Look at us, the gang's back together. I We've know, been it's away been like three weeks. Yeah, well, How's I had your this, stomach doing. I had, my stomach is now fine. Jessie Thank you for asking. Jesse very loudly announced what it was you were. I didn't think were, it was actually that. What did you that? say? I didn't think it was actually that. I thought we were joking around. That no, was, like was it? It, it actually was that. Yeah, I had was to say it was I had, totally. Oh, I had I just, exactly what you said it was. Yeah, on air. I thought it was a bit. That's oh. what I thought it was. Well, no, it I was, think we should get more in depth bled. about my. Segment. No, that's not. Quite, you know, no, you I gotta, think we should. I think that'd be. Just a bit. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I don't anyway. need to get into it. Spring has sprung. What are your spring albums? I want to hear them both from both. Skylarking. Skylarking. By XTC. Is that your like spring oh, album? That's a spring album. Is that yeah. a spring album for yeah. you? Jesse, do you have any spring albums? Um, I've been li listening to uh, Left at London a bunch. I what it, I, left no. in London. Uh, she is. Uh, she used to be a Viner, and then she started making really rad music. A Viner. Yeah, she was on Vine. Vine Dad, wow. you wouldn't understand. No, I do the one know, who was like, uh -huh, that's I do Andy that. Milonakis that's her. Went to die. No, Andy Milnakis never died in my heart, baby. <laughs> Well, like, I'm sorry, what's, is that their name is? Yeah, Left at London. Her real name is Nat Puff. But, but she, does, she does, like, under that, I don't know yeah. her at all. But yeah, I, she's on Twitter a bunch. It's been really great for me to recognize. Chris is on Twitter a bunch. Chris I'm, is on Twitter listen, on I'm bunch. extremely online. I do great, because now I'm 25, and this thing has happened where I realize, like, if I don't know something, that has no bearing on whether or not it's popular, because I don't know jack shit anymore. I know, like, my three bands that I listen to, and that's it, and I just don't. Just like you'll say a band so great. that sounds real. Mountain, yeah. Mountain Goats. Awesome. They might be giants. They might be giants in Afraid Brigade. Yeah, so those are my three. Actually, honestly, yeah, that was up I, Well, there. yeah. I mean, that seems who could be on the mark. Afraid Brigade. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it, yeah. And, like, add Jake McKelvey in there. I've listened to a lot of The Clash lately. but Really? I think, I is, think, that your, is that your spring? Honestly, I mean, dude, The Clash is London not... Calling. That's a spring. That's a springy album. There's a lot of, like, there's a lot of, like, happy reggae that's actually about, like, social unrest. Can I tell you a little secret? What? I don't like The Clash, guys. Well, that's fine. I don't like The Clash, and I don't like The Pixies. They, okay, Pixies, you're wrong about. Pixies might be the best rock and roll band of all time. I am not but again, wrong about that. I, again, I'm an idiot, and my opinion doesn't matter. It's like a beautiful thing that's happening. That's like, not what you say to me off the air. Yeah, but on the air, on record, <laughs> my opinion doesn't <laughs> on matter. on record, in front of all these people. Yeah, in front of all these people. But we're not here to talk about whether or not I'm an idiot. We're here to talk about MoGo. One more with Brian Erickson is brought to you by, where's my camera? There it is. Is brought to you by the savory goodness of MoGo Korean Fusion Tacos, featuring fresh homemade ingredients, family recipes, and a variety variety of menu options, Mogo is bringing traditional Korean flavors to the masses. For the past three years, Mogo has also been a leading sponsor of Asbury Park Live, a free weekly summer concert series run in conjunction with the Asbury Park Music Foundation. This event series not only showcases emerging and established Asbury Park acts, but also raises money for youth music education, including the launch of a new Latin music summer camp last year. Jesse and I are enrolling again this year. So visit either of their two locations, Cookman Avenue or the Asbury Park Boardwalk, for casual sit-down dining or takeout. The price is always fair, food is always fantastic. Mogo Korean Fusion Tacos. This one time I put some in a blender and drank it like a thick shake and it was still <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Brian. She's a singer songwriter whose latest <laughs> Jesse, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse. I'm fine. I'm fine. She's a singer songwriter whose latest release, 1123, is available everywhere. Let us welcome Jack. Thank 
you for joining. Thank you yeah. for having me. Yeah, of I course. Climb onto the stool. Yeah, they're high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, so, so welcome. Thank you. Uh, you have been uh, you've been playing music for a little while under like a couple of different banners. Yes. So, uh, my first question is, why is it important to you to continue to define and redefine your own narrative? Yeah, um, well, when I first came out, I guess, in the local music scene here, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been playing music for a while, and I used my name, uh, mm -hmm. and I used my name kind of shortened, Jen Karma. Yep. Uh, so and I was you're, doing you're that for a while. And you're playing big shows, too. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was really great, and um, it's just all kind of evolved and led me to where I am now, so when I decided to record uh, the EP, 1123, mm -hmm. You know, playing out and doing acoustic solo stuff is really awesome, and I love it. That's my um, like my foundation. A lot of my influences are you know come from that genre, um, but I also have a lot of other influences. I hear a lot of indie pop sounds when I write a song. I, I'm hearing all of that, but to get it all out there just with myself and, and a guitar, you don't really hear that. So um, basically, when we went in to record the album, I did that um, at 816 Tracks East with Pat Noon. I cool. We um, worked out exactly like different influences and sounds that I wanted to get from these songs. And what, um, what were a couple of those influences? Um, well, they were, they they range for sure, like Tegan and Sarah. Oh yeah. Um, uh, but you know, every song uh, there was Pat Benatar. <laughs> so of Torpedo course. actually is very um, Love Is a Battlefield kind of Excellent. feel. For, we were listening to that. that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's definitely a lot of um, you know '80s influence indie pop sound and. Uh, to do that, uh, I decided to, I wanted a band. I didn't want it to just be just me. Yeah. It's, it's a full band sound, and that's what we're working towards. And so that's where Jack came about. It's my initials. Excellent. And yeah, so we're just going from there. <laughs> cool, cool. Now, I noticed, um, you know, I, I saw you play just uh, a couple nights ago at the mm -hmm. Asbury Hotel, and you used that voice tone pedal, that, uh, you know, kind of self-harmony uh, pedal. And do you find that helps sort of bridge the gap between these solo acoustic uh, presentations and kind of the more digital sound that you've got on your on your EP definitely I think you know it's not fully there but it definitely adds like a different element than uh, just me playing acoustic which like I said it's fine too but when I can add in a little bit of harmony it just adds another layer and you know I, I love the way it fills up the sound and you you picked up on that right away you kind of oh, yeah. knew which pedal that was without even looking yep. you were TC like, Helicon <laughs> voice tone yeah. Brian you're, you're a little like, bit more of like a pedal jockey nerd than I think you let on aren't you I am yes, yes. but right. this is it about me too yeah obviously <laughs> we have so, five guests yeah we have five guests <laughs> this is not the time to talk about my pedal obsession <laughs> uh, another time how do you uh, how do you get involved with uh, 3143 so I like to think that I, I have my eyes and ears out and you yeah, know what's course. going on. Um, so I've kind of been like under the radar a little bit, but I'm I'm always learning and researching and. Well, somehow, that's good though. Like yeah. sometimes you kind of have to because I remember like uh, probably what two years ago, three years ago, I remember seeing like sh you know you were playing like the Stone Pony and stuff like that before. Uh, like I said, you're playing <laughs> these big shows. And then, yeah, you kind of, it felt like you sort of went under the radar a little bit. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is, but that is important. Like, kind of when you, you know, when you sort of take that step back, um, that's cool though. Uh, you know, you, you kind of keep your eyes open a little bit. Yeah, I'm definitely still, um, I'm a fan of all the, you know, the different music coming out of the area. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to see what everyone's doing and I want to be a part of that. And so when I saw 3143 and I reached out to KL, um, we connected and it was just, a real like mutual understanding like he mm -hmm. kind of I didn't have to say certain things and he kind of already was saying things that I was thinking I'm like this is this is exactly what we need to be doing right Excellent. now so I'm really excited like about this partnership sentence, uh, sentences, right? <laughs> something like that yeah he, he had like we had a share vision for sure <laughs> cool cool now what um, what should audiences expect from you in the future? We get in, like a new single, new record of some kind soon. Yeah, all that good stuff. Um, yeah. A new single is in the works right now. Um, I will be playing Torpedo tonight, which okay. is a cool. Um, the, the version I'm playing is obviously it's going to be acoustic, and that's somewhat how I put it out on the record. There's a little more production on the on the EP, but uh, what you're going to hear from Torpedo in the next you know few weeks. Uh, when it finally releases. Next few weeks? Um, I don't know. Well, whenever that is ready to be. Oh, uh, no. Like, that's like <laughs> It's going to be coming out soon. Um, soon. <laughs> yes. Um, the ever ambiguous. It just has different. to be recorded first. You know, kind of. <laughs> it just has to be it's written. It's in the works, yeah. 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 
Um, well, like, you know, we're remixing it. Um, Dean Anthony, uh, he's awesome and he's working on it and it's sounding amazing. So it's going to be a really cool sound. Um, so that's coming out. Um, I'm constantly writing new material. So I've got Excellent. new material I've been breaking out at different shows. I'm playing tomorrow night um, at, the downtown at the downtown in Red yeah. Bank. Um, and I'll definitely be playing some new stuff there. Excellent. And then an album down the line. And, and we're working with uh, getting some band members together so we can have a full band sound. Cool, cool. Yeah. And uh, my last question to you, and obviously we're going to have to you know, have you back for a full, I would love that. You know, for your own show, maybe when the single comes out cool. or when a record comes out. Um, what motivates you to keep moving forward? You know, it's funny that you say that because I was just, you know, having this conversation. It's a passion. You're compelled to do it. There's, it's not that there's like dedication, even though there is dedication. Yeah. It's just there's no choice. There's just this voice and this drive to create and put yourself out there. And you have to kind of, you know, follow that instinct and keep doing things, even if it's a little. Um, like overwhelming or nerve-wracking um, you could feel like maybe vulnerable but it that's the best when you can just put yourself out there and and keep making your art I appreciate that when other people do that I think that's when like true art really comes out when you can just you know lay it all out there and that's why I, I just keep doing it <laughs> excellent yeah excellent and I can't wait to hear uh, a little bit of it later thank you so Jack yeah. thank you so much thank for joining you. us thank you thank you so much My pleasure. thank you <laughs> We gotta get we gotta get one of those applause signs, I know, especially I know. for like the nights where like there's no yeah. there's no one else here. It's just like light flashing, no one clapping. <laughs> I love that. Uh, she's an award-nominated singer whose voice is guaranteed to make you all jealous. I don't. Hey. Which which camera was she supposed to say that in? I don't know. There wasn't a light on one of them. She's an award-winning singer whose voice is guaranteed to make Thank you all you. jealous. Please welcome to the show, Deirdre Forrest. Hello. All right, I'm gonna try not to kill myself getting up here. Yeah. I think doing like, great. we really don't consider because we are all we're taller people. We really yeah, do we not we consider very tall hosts. Half I'm, the population. I'm very vertically challenged. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so hi, welcome back. Hi. Hello. The last time you were here, we were both guests. Yes, that is true. We were like oh we goodness. had our own uh, show before mm -hmm. I was. This part of it. Before assimilated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, assimilated. Yeah, assimilated. Assimilated is really what the word is. There's a downward slope. That was fine. Good times. Wow, downward thanks. slope to the top. <laughs> Don't okay. even. Yeah, no, that's, uh, uh, squeeze my face. So so you have wow. some that's what, I don't know what's that's what just happened. It wasn't that hard. So Deirdre. So you've had some like starts and stops in a uh, recording lately, but you're back in the studio. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, so I'm working with a fantastic producer, Steve Greenwell, and he's actually right upstairs in this building. He has his studio right above us. So hello, <laughs> hello up there. Like Chris, Tia, like a knock on the ceiling. And I started last year, um, but s some of the songs were like kind of half written. Okay. Um, so when I came back into the studio, just about a month ago, I had everything finished up, and I felt like. They were the right songs for the project, and um, so we just, you know, we started working again. We started, you know, chugging along with everything, and I feel like it's, like, everything, the five songs that are on the EP are, like, the songs that I want to put out, so I feel really good about it. Okay, know. cool. So, um, what's it been like working with 3143 so far? Wonderful. Um, KL and I meet up, like, once a week. We text each other all the time. He's kind of a... Uh, you know, become a really good friend of mine, and um, he's extremely supportive, and Jess is amazing too, and um, it's just a, it's really good to have like a team behind mm -hmm. me, and to feel like I can bounce ideas off of people. Like being and, more helpful, having more kind of voices. Yeah, to, yeah, and to feel really supported, you know, to feel like I'm on the right path with everything. It's wonderful. I love that. Okay. Can I jump back real quick? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You just said those, the new EP, the songs you felt were like ready, something like that. Like, it is this kind of thing where you have, like, a big old catalog of songs, and these are the ones that you want to record? Yeah. Like, talk about that. Because, um, I like, that's the thing that, like, all of my projects, we have a thing where we write, you know, 30 songs, and then, you know, we learn them, and we get them down pat, and then we never record them, and we yeah. never touch them again. Well, it's like Rivers <laughs> Cuomo. Like, he's got the, the spreadsheet, the Google Doc. <laughs> it's always got to be about Weezer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like, yeah, there is something to be said for, like, fact, like stockpiling. Is that something you do as a writer? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um... 
I'm a bit of a perfectionist mm. and if I don't feel like something's quite good enough, I'll just kind of chuck it and just say, no, nah, I'm never playing that out. I'm never doing anything with it. It's just not mm -hmm. there, you know? Um, so these five songs definitely, I felt like, were the strongest and um, they say what I want to say on this project. Are these like more recent songs? These songs that have been um, around for a while? Yeah, they're, with the exception of Fearless, um, they're all pretty much new songs mm -hmm. that I haven't played out much and... I just found that interesting, again, this thing that the partners we were going through is like that whole idea of like, the thing you're most passionate about is the thing you just finished, and the thing that mm -hmm. you're working on right now versus something that you may have been spending the past six months perfecting, and then suddenly you're bored of it. Yeah. So I yep. just found that interesting to see people who are like getting ready to record who I know have stockpile, and like how do you actually choose those songs? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, oh, so you work with kids. You're a music teacher, yes. for those of you <laughs> those of you watching who oh, don't know Daredevil. <laughs> Talking to you. Out in TV I was just, I was just um, wondering how teaching music influences your work. Um, well, I guess the kids always inspire me to just be really open and genuine, and um, you know, with little kids, because I work with like pre-K kids, and then some older kids for like ukulele and voice lessons and stuff Brian like that. Brian and I are like mentally pre-K, so we'll get what <laughs> I was gonna say right around Chris's age. Yeah, 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 you're right, around, <laughs> right in the wheelhouse, <laughs> baby. I'm in good company right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, the kids are just so um, real and awesome, and they just say, like, the coolest things, and they're just really, really happy like to, like, oh, God. They're saying kids are um, the darndest things. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, every single day that I'm working, I at least called Ariel once, and or Merida from Brave. <laughs> And, oh, wow. uh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are both Good awesome, comparisons. Awesome people. So yeah. well, they have uh, they have a lot to say about um, quite a lot of things. <laughs> things that I get all like the family details that I probably shouldn't get, and oh, you know yeah. all all the stuff. Working with kids <laughs> is is really rewarding. <laughs> oh yeah, at the fun. very least for it's your really Twitter fun. feed for like and I'm a big kid, so jokes. it's like it's perfect. You know? Yeah, that's so. good. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, so. Last question, I suppose. Yeah, because we've got to have these interviews all, all short. But oh, well. so this time next year, <laughs> what's different? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, right now I'm working on putting a full band together, and I'm gonna have the EP out and hopefully be touring and just doing music full time. So that's the goal, really, is to just. Um, you know, put out the EP and um, just, you know, get out there. Do we know when it's going to be out or is it another mysterious soon? Um, <laughs> kind of a mysterious soon, but we're really like chugging along and it's getting done. Like last year when I had started the process, it was, um, like I said, the songs were kind of half written and whatever. So um, I hope by the end of the summer, probably at this oh, point that's so awesome. awesome yeah i'm very excited yeah. we're really excited good. for you thank you yeah <laughs> well thank you so much Deirdre, for being on the show again thank you thank you guys I love you guys i'm also i'm also helping oh, you oh you're gonna help me yes oh geez okay Ooh, look at that you literally <laughs> like you trust because <laughs> you're such a gentleman <laughs> hey listen man chivalry is dead and i say yeah probably One More is brought to you by the Asbury Park Music Foundation. APMF raises money to support youth music programs throughout Asbury Park that provide lasting skills, self-confidence, and life-changing experiences for underserved kids in our community. This includes funding for the Hip Hop Institute at the Boys and Girls Club of Monmouth, in-school music programs at Hope Academy, and scholarships for, music for kids to attend Lake House Music Academy. Look Thank you, Chris. APMF also hosts concert series throughout the year. Whether it's Music Mondays at Springwood Park, Asbury Park Live over the summer, Suburbia Friday Nights, or the song Sunday Songwriter Series, APMF always has something going on. Check out their calendar for more details. And if you're interested in making a meaningful difference in the community or keeping Asbury Park's legacy of music alive, head to asburyparkmusiclives.org to make a donation. And while you're there, pick up a Music Saved Asbury Park t-shirt. All proceeds make it possible to support Music Saved My Life Youth Music programs. How many of those does Connor Bracken have? About six. Are you, yeah, were you going to bang on it six? Yeah, this is... <laughs>
He's an award-winning songwriter whose music has appeared on television and in films. Let us welcome Arlen Phyllis. <laughs> oh, all Perfect right. timing. Hello. Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for coming How's on. Yeah, how are you? Hey, so, Arlen, hey. first question. Will yes, I sir. ever pronounce your last name right? You did. Did I? Yes, Well, Phyllis. he got it right. I, I'm wondering if you think I will ever get it right. I, I haven't no. introduced you later. No. <laughs> Just no. You could only try. I'll do my Keep best. Keep trying. <laughs> but thank you for getting that right, because sure, uh, sure. few people It do became actually. like a small obsession of ours, uh, you know, when we started, because we do the events every week, obviously when you play shows, we're, you know, we're going to make mention of that, but yeah, it, it became like a soft debate item every yeah. single time you, you played it? a show. Pretty much, we probably announced like every show of yours last Generally, year. the best way to find out is to ask me. But yeah, you but we didn't want to do that. Get it right. Right. Yeah, I think I watched like an interview or something. When we see each other, I'm pretty drunk, so I'm not going to remember that aspect of it. And I am as well, so <laughs> I generally <laughs> don't care what you call me at that point. So your um, your bio mentions uh, that you've been mentored by uh, the late producer Tom Down. Yeah, and um, yeah, if people aren't familiar. Worked with like Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Otis Redding, and so on and so on. Like basically some of the best. Yeah, he was a recording industry pioneer. Yeah, he, he was you know critical. first eight track at he uh, built, Atlantic yeah, Records. And he the put whole slide deal, faders yeah. on a console. So. So what did that experience? Uh, what did that experience teach you? Um, to be considerate, um, and by that I mean take time to think about the process, prepare, um, approach every aspect of, in this case, a recording uh, um, experience. Um, give every everything its due. You know, don't rush through pre-production. Don't. Yeah. Don't rush through the songs. I mean, sit down, think about the lyric content, think about your structure, think about how all that, not just listen, not how it sounds to you, but how the listener hears it. Yeah. And there's a huge difference, and a lot of artists don't understand this, is what sounds good in their head doesn't necessarily sound good to us in our heads. Well, that's so it's critical like, uh, to understand that. Yeah, yeah that, that's like the old saying, you know, an artist is, is rarely the best judge of, uh, his or her own work. Yeah. Mm. Well, there's a reason for that. You know. Yeah. But then, of course, being an artist. Well, be, because who gives no, a but, shit? <laughs> but no, but that's important because once you put it out, like yeah. it doesn't really belong to you. I mean, no. really, the goal, I you know, I, I guess you would assume or or maybe hope um, or aspire toward the goal being like once you put it out, it doesn't belong to you anymore. Not only that, so like but, I listen yeah. to your stuff and I have no idea what you think about right. it and. You know, while I'm listening to it, like that doesn't necessarily matter to me. Right. Or you know, the Burns or your stuff, Jesse. Like it doesn't matter what the creator thinks about it. It only, you know, if I don't like it, I'm gonna skip it. And you know, regardless of like what you say it's about or how much it means to you. So yeah. like that is very important, and I think that is something that does get lost a lot of the time. It is preparation is everything, and 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 intent. I mean, yeah. really, truly, what it is. And the truth is, you make a record and you let it go. Um, and you're likely uh, not going to like it anymore by the time you put it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it. which is on purpose. It's kind of it drives you towards your next ambition, your next goal to hopefully improve, to make a better record. I've, to I've do heard better. about that. Yeah. Where it's like if you start liking your records, like you're just you're doomed. Mm. Yeah, I've never liked a single thing I've ever <laughs> released. Well, then you're you're clear. So I'm right, right on track. track. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. What you Hopefully look like you had something, Chris. I don't know. I just it's this is an interesting conversation because I always I do I'm very much a proponent of once an artist releases something it no longer belongs to them. Yeah, hundred percent. But there is for me it's like finding that weird balance between yes this doesn't belong to me and maybe at that point what I think of it or what I was going for doesn't matter but part of it is making sure the audience feels that you did your job. Yeah, to and truthfully you don't totally get rid of it because yeah. you, inevitably you spend the next year performing it. Yeah, yeah. and you've yeah. got to be sincere and reconnect. Yeah. With yeah. Really, with that artist that did it, you know. it's it's like the best stuff is the stuff that can actually convey <coughs> to the audience without saying directly yeah. what it's about or what the artist's intent is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, if you're doing it really, really right, they're gonna know what it's about without having to ask. Well, mm -hmm. you hope that they can apply it to themselves, yeah. whatever it is, and it may not be exactly what you intended, 
but if you're clear about your own vision, people have a tendency to absorb things and make them their own and yeah. apply them to their own needs at that moment, whatever they are. And um, so by being an effective songwriter, you yeah. can really touch people. And it gets to the point where, like, ways. in in the right under the right circumstance, too, it actually, I've, I've seen, like, heard cases, uh, what's the song, Alive by Pearl Jam, mm -hmm. uh, where, like, an audience, you know, that's one example, but, like, where the audience will assign a meaning to it that the writer doesn't intend, but mm -hmm. then after a while, you know... Um, like Eddie Vedder and Stone right. Gossard will be like, you know what? If that's what everybody says it's about, maybe then we're is, wrong. Right? Yeah. Maybe this yeah. is what it. Or maybe really, today yeah. that's what it's about. It's yeah. For, it's for you today. Yeah. yeah that's, exactly. That's perfectly valid. Yeah. Now you've done a bit of mentoring <clears throat> of others also. Yeah. We we had a uh, I guess you call him a protege, but we had uh, Lance Green on Lance. the uh, on the show. That's actually where I first heard your uh, name. No kidding. Yeah, I just um, saw we played a show together the other night. Yeah, and and I guess you worked on his uh, his first EP. Yeah, I produced his first EP, which is really spectacular, actually. And how do you impart, um, you know, how, how do you take your experience with someone like Tom Dowd, or even just on your own journey as a writer, and impart them on the people, you know, that you're working. with? Well, I, when I sit down with an artist that's interested in being produced, I, I, first of all, I want to make sure that they want to be produced by me. And I make sure that they know what kind of producer I am. Mm -hmm. And I let them know that as a producer, what I do is I deliver the bad news. Because good news, everybody will give you. Yeah. And in order to make a good record, in my opinion, you have to know what's going wrong. Mm -hmm. um, you have to know what's weak in your song. You have to know what's weak in your voice. You have to know what's weak, you know, and look, there's a lot of uh, great advice I give that I should probably listen to. <laughs> um, but as you know, the, at that time, you know, when you're there's clarity when you're sharing, you know, kind of experience with somebody else as opposed to trying to apply it to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but I let them know. I said, look, if you're comfortable with me telling you that this is not a good song or the way you're singing this note is it's awkward and i know it i know you're feeling it and i know it's right too but again back to that thing what i'm hearing yeah. and what you're feeling are different things so we need to find a place where what you're feeling and what i'm hearing are closer together so that we're going to reach an audience and you're not going to um you know send people away with an awkward phrase or you know yeah. you know, so you want to address those things and you have to be brave you have to be willing to uh, uh, take some good constructive criticism it's you know it's kind of the way I like to work I think it's always been I've always worked with artists uh, producers that uh, deliver the bad news Tom used to say to me he goes Arlen I'm I'm here to make hit records not shit records <laughs> what are you here I mean, today to make yeah he's like do you need to go home and think about this because right now I'm not quite sure we're on the same page yeah. and I was like wow you know I'm going to go home and think about that. And uh, so those are the things that I like to share. Yeah, and that's, that's I think, some great advice. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as we, you know, unfortunately have to kind of get wrapped up, uh, my last question to you is, um, y y like, you've had a pretty quiet year so far. Um, what's what's on the docket for 2019? Are um, we, are we getting all kinds of things. I've been, uh, shows? my what's wife and I, we just have, uh, welcomed a new son. Mm -hmm. um, who's Noah's. <laughs> Um, he's six months old and inspiring and so I got a lot of things going on I mean they speak to what let me because we're running short I have a couple things I need to oh, share please, with you guys yeah, that are right so ahead. important to me right now because they speak to why to all of you um, <laughs> first I, I just want to mention because yesterday a great friend of the music community in Asbury Park died Mr. Joe Harvard, Joe Harvard yeah. who is my friend who is uh, a founder of our insurgency here um, and our musical efforts and his attention to, um, to uh, 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 equal uh, uh, opportunities for people of unfortunate circumstances and his knowledge um, and care to the ecology and to making the planet a better place. He uh, is a huge loss for this community and today I'm thinking about him more than anything else. Um, so we miss you, Joe. Also on this date, um, in 1965, a woman named Viola Liuzzo was murdered. And uh, she was a white woman from Detroit who went down to Selma and 
uh, to volunteer to participate in the march was Dr. King, and um, she was driving marchers back and forth from Selma to Montgomery, and on one of those trips, she was murdered by the Ku Klux Klan. Whoa. And uh, I uh, wrote a song about her, Viola, um, and, uh, I, you know, I think it's critical that we remember these people that given, you know, the ultimate sacrifice for themselves yeah. for our right to vote, because that's what that was all about. It was something that she felt was penultimately important and that we have to address. Um, and clearly the state of our country as it is, is a testament to how important it is for us to use as our, our voice at the ballot box and that we don't become apathetic and we don't fall into the idea that our voice and our vote, vote does not matter because it, it's critical, everyone. So we, we have a lot of work to do in that. So. Yeah. Are you, is that you announcing your candidacy? That is me announcing uh, a new record. Oh, okay. Uh, coming <laughs> up, uh, is that real? Uh, you know, I do have a, a very long, <laughs> long view uh, goal of running for Congress one day. Oh. So. Um, that would be okay, terrific. Go for it. You I'd have like my vote that. if I Thank wasn't you. a convicted felon. Um, <laughs> well, that's what I appreciate you're that. <laughs> would you like to be my uh, my campaign manager? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because so clearly that checks out. you uh, fit the profile. Oh, you're gonna love um, the contacts perfect. I got. Right. Oh, terrific. <laughs> Thank, Thank you guys so Thank much you for so having me. This was Thanks, great. Ryan. Great show. We're gonna hear from you. We're gonna hear a song from you on the piano that you tune, correct? Yes. Oh, so it's got a lot of love in that piano. Perfect. That was wonderful. Uh, yes. Or uh, no, we're doing uh, Fox Ooh. Ooh. So. Ah, so. Hi. All right. Well, <laughs> we got. Well, it, well, well, are we gonna well, do an actual announcement? Yeah, okay. I just. <laughs> is it this one? What's that? Where no you? one's. Thank yeah, you. Probably that one. Just. <laughs> She's a singer, songwriter, and science writer whose latest single, "So Excited," is available everywhere. Welcome, Fox Ann. What's up, Loving, loving the aesthetic right now. Loving the aesthetic. Wow, yeah, that's such a like, lovely like ensemble. I just like this this winter, like February hit. Chelsea, and who it's are you so wearing? <laughs> it's like I live in New York, and it's close. so fucking gray. I was just like, <laughs> I need everything in my life to be colorful, and I chose one color. <laughs> and that color it's is the very most bright. Bright. <laughs> you can find. So I mean, I you're mean, putting me to shame. I mean, <laughs> that's not that's that hard. Yeah, that's not, not that hard. Well, I mean, I have no shame, but you're putting my picture to shame. Forgot about that song. Sorry, Matt. Oh God. Is that helping? <laughs> so Chelsea, hi. Yes. Hi. hi. Hi, guys. Hey. Um. I want to talk about your new song. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, so excited. It's sarcastic and funny and very <laughs> self-aware. Um, thank you. So the question I have for you is, uh, what do you think the right balance is between self-promotion, support, and obligation when it comes to being in the music scene? Uh, um, <laughs> Starting oh, off with a nice easy question. Uh, that um, what are those three things again? <laughs> Well, there's self-promotion, <laughs> <laughs> self-promotion, uh, support, and obligation. Definitely. Yeah. Um, self-promotion is kind of like just like the necessary evil of being a musician. Like, no musician knows how to sell themselves or wants to sell themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just like it's part of the game. And like obligation, it's like you have to like draw the line between like, yes, I should be going to shows and doing these things and writing this amount, but then also being like, I'm like a human being, and sometimes I have to sit home and not do things. Mm. Um, and the other one, I can't remember what it is. So <laughs> uh, support, support. Oh, just you just gotta support your friends. Like it can, oh, yeah. it can be. It, it's easy to like get caught up in like, oh man, well they're doing that, and that's cooler than what I'm doing, and like mm -hmm. getting kind of down on yourself about it instead of just supporting them because they're your friends. Yeah. Um, but it's just you know not getting caught up in that and just being like, oh my god, my friends are so fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think our friends are very cool. Yeah, <laughs> like the the company that we keep, at least in the at the very least yeah. in this room, is just. I mean, I'm very biased, but I really agree. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so you were on the show rather recently, but what mm -hmm. have you been uh, up to in those few months? Um, all kinds of stuff, working and musicking. I'm writing uh, my first full length right now, um, which is daunting, uh, to say the <laughs> least, because I'm like, all right, end of the month, it's going to be done, and I'm like, so it's March 25th. Yeah. Uh, 
gotten some close, but it's been really interesting and difficult. How do you mean writing full length? Like, are you writing specifically like a set number of songs to be done? Just like, just like enough songs to make like a full record and where I feel really good about every single one of the songs. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm like, I have the number of songs, but it's like, let me see if I can write ones that I like better. And, yeah. you know, it's just kind of like, it'll never be done. Like, with any, like, single song, it's like, it can always be improved. It'll oh, yeah. never really be done. That kind of thing. Well, that's, I mean, that was constantly the struggle that we all go through. I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I just talked about that. But, oh, again, I love the idea of, like, I want to write this amount of songs if I want to do a full album versus yeah. the... I just, I've never piece. done a full album, and I'm just like, well... Check that box. Check yeah. that box. See come. what happens. The time I really has come. deeply love So Excited, by the way. I'm not sure I Thank you so much. Yeah, I it's, it's really a bop. It's Thanks. A, I tried a bop. <laughs> it's, it's a bop. It's a bit of a jam. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it, it slaps. It, it hits. It ro rocks. It rolls. <laughs> All I've ever wanted to do is slap. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you don't have a bass player in your band. How can uh, you slap? Actually. Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. Oh. 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 Yeah, we've been kind of, the arrangement, the band arrangement on the new record is probably going to be pretty different. Um, I don't really know how to describe how it's going to be different, but we are working with the bass player now. We've been rehearsing with one, um, which has been really fun. So you have the bass player, and then your former bass player who now plays keys, whose yes. name I forget. Mike. Is he, he's playing, like, bass keys, basically, right? Like yeah, he's kind of doing, like, like, textures he, underneath. He's doing textures underneath, so now, like, that's changing, and he's going to do a lot more, like, kind of interesting, like, high-range, synthy shit. Cool. You know, I'm excited music for it. terms. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be very, <laughs> very technical. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm very High technical. High range oh, yeah. synthy stuff. Yeah. Very technical. I'm technical. Terms. I'm a technical writer. That worked out super well. I was about to ask you about yeah. your bandmates. Uh, your. <laughs> Uh, so, Andrew had a serious performance a couple days ago. How? Hey, Andrew. Oh, sorry. Hey, how is he? <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, he's there sneaking he is. in the Andrew, back. How is, hey. how is shredding the vibraphone at Carnegie Hall? Yeah, how is that? He straight up had a solo. Did, did you Carnegie shred Hall. that solo? Come on. It was yeah, sick. Come on. Come on. Like, Talk about this yeah. fucking solo. All right. Yeah, let's. Yeah, he literally. Welcome special guest Watch Andrew of Fox Hands. Yeah, Fox, come here. Yeah. Fox, Fox, can you introduce him, please? All right. So this is um, master percussionist <laughs> in Fox Hands, Andrew Function. Yes. How's it going? And hey, just a fun? couple yeah. days ago, Hello. he did a solo at Carnegie Hall. How Casual. how was the uh, how was the vibraphone? Did it slap? Uh, you know, it vibes. <laughs> it vibes. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's about the best answer <laughs> I can hope really for. Was. Just there. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I um I play a lot of classical music, okay. so that's like, you know, my day job. I would I guess your day uh, job. Your day job. Twenty nineteen. Uh -huh. Casual. Yeah. You know, so how many how many figures are we talking in the bank account? Seven, <laughs> oh. eight, nine. <laughs> oh, super duper rich. Billions. Yeah. Billions. <laughs> a lot of money in classical vibraphone these you days. Know, there's like more than I would have thought, but definitely like less than, <laughs> than you'd want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, there's that quote from Leonard Bernstein. Vibes are where the money. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Actually, let's talk because oh my God. Anyway, so like when you're playing with Fox Ant, are you sure. you're kind of are you doing? You're not really pl you're playing a traditional kit, but I feel like you're not yeah. playing yeah. it straightforward. Is that fair? Well, I think you know as part of what she wants for her music, like we try to avoid the tendency to like slip into sort of the like tropes of rock this and roll, is a rock song. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and I think. I mean, <clears throat> drum set is so associated with rock and roll mm -hmm. in a certain sense that, like, I'm definitely playing grooves on drum set, but I try to avoid, like, you know, maybe the stuff that I pops into my head first. You yeah, know? yeah. Try to find some m more sounds and a little, like, kind of outside-of-the-box way to play under the songs. Okay. Especially because a lot of the songs that you write have, um, you know, have grooves that are, like, not exactly the first thing you would think, maybe... Not the immediate bop? Yeah, you know, and I think it's fun, it's like, finding... Break. It's a slow Yeah, it's fun. It's obvious slap. Yeah. Fun finding our, like, you know, more unique sound within... Yeah. Within it, yeah. And it seems like your classical training also helps you deal with occasional curveballs that you'll get thrown. Like, hey, so the sound of cymbals, like, makes me hate everything <laughs> about music, and if you could yeah. never play a cymbal again for, like, the next six months, I'd really appreciate that. A lot of washes. You know, just, like, occasional... Yeah. Occasional, yeah. occasional curve balls. Yeah, a lot of drums and <laughs> rims and, you know, yeah, dry, so like, yeah, dry sound. What's the fattest mallet you own? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a more private question than I think we Jesus can <laughs> oh, I'm oh, yeah. yeah, no, it's fun, though. And, I mean, like, I have played drum set forever also, so I feel super yeah. comfortable playing. 
Okay, and you know. we were actually talking about this earlier. Like, we don't know how literally do you get to Carnegie Hall because we don't know where it is. <laughs> oh, this is someone. someone which, which 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 one we are we take taking? The, the to, 57th yeah, Street. Do you yeah. wheel the vibraphone like on the subway? With I can see you like trying to just, <laughs> just one step at a time. Uh, is Carnegie the Hall backlined? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, one of the things that I would you got to bring your own like, symbols. Yeah, yeah. 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 symbols, yeah. right, yeah. right, yeah. right. In the high hat clutch. And they only want oh oh the clutch right. As a professional. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what sucks though is they only have crate amps. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, they only yeah. use yeah. line six now. Gotta, yeah, yeah, you probably yeah. Chris is like all those building. effects though. Yeah. I think we've riffed enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a big oh, difference Chris, though yourself. between playing in bands oh. and playing classical stuff. <laughs> is that you don't have to bring your own gear? Yeah. Yeah. Luke that just makes fine. sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, that's it's fine. So Don't say you knocked over the camera. We're trying to talk. We're trying to do a bad yeah. bit about Carnegie yeah. Hall over here. Do you mind? So. <laughs> this is sending into pure chaos. Yeah, yeah what's like, happening? It's is? like five days. Okay, okay so. We gotta, we gotta get ourselves, so, yeah. We gotta get ourselves um, uh, last Fair question I have for you. Yes. Scene karaoke. Who's your duet partner? Scene karaoke? Yeah. Oh, like, yes. like, like music in the scene. Oh, I'm like, mm. yeah. wait, this scene or yeah, like, like scene? emo like, scene? I'm thinking like, no, like, 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 yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Like, I'll take the yeah. dance. Oh. So like, so like. <laughs> oh, Deirdre. Duh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Did you, did you hear oh. that? Deirdre, Deirdre, you're you got you got chosen as my hypothetical karaoke partner. Uh, right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh Disney God. Hercules. I won't say I'm in love. Oh yeah. God, I know you're on board. That would be perfect. <laughs> Andrew, what's, Andrew, what's your karaoke song? Yo. My karaoke song? My karaoke song? Because you're 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 a singer too. You're yeah. singing in the band. Yeah. You've yeah. got good voice. Um, my karaoke song. Hmm. Maybe like Johann Sebastian. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe like maybe some police. <laughs> maybe wow. like, uh, message in a bottle. Yeah, maybe in a bottle. yeah get everyone yeah. dancing. Andrew, yeah. Andrew's got a thing for the eighties music. Yeah. Hey, yeah. sings a great voice, man. <laughs> <laughs> He also hosts uh, River Monsters. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Sting hosting. It's it's not actually Sting. It's uh, a lot okay. like him. Yeah, have you ever Sting. seen River Monsters? <laughs> All right, Fox and where can we find him? Yeah, Oh. Where can we find what online? Or, uh, your music. <laughs> <laughs> you can find Fox Sands music on Spotify, on SoundCloud, on Tidal, on like every streaming platform, and it's the only band called Fox Ann. Yeah. So just like if you just Google that shit, Google Fox Ann, like Roxanne with an F. Oh, hey. <laughs> if you just Google it, like if you have any any streaming cap, if you have the internet, just Google it. Fox Ann, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, we have, this is the worst idea we've oh, ever wow. had. We're doing it next. Wow, absolutely let's oh, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, next. <laughs> next. <laughs> All right, so, uh, quick, quick, quick. We're bring, next up we're gonna, ne where am I, where am I? Next up, over here. next yeah. up we're gonna bring on Dave and Justin of Dave Mooney and viewers like you. And we came up with a really terrible idea that we're gonna eat a bunch of really hot vegan wings. Hold on, wait. And the reason we chose vegan wings is because Brian didn't want to do this and he thought he was gonna get out of it by doing vegan, but we're not. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dave Mooney and Justin Franco of viewers like you. $12 tater tots. Oh man, this is the worst idea. It this. really is. Oh, God, it's really no. awful. Oh, my God. Hello, friends. All right. So first off, welcome. Uh, let I'm me get this cry. right. Uh, Dave, your latest single, The Way It Goes, is available everywhere, correct? Indeed it is. Indeed it All right, is. that was put on the reissue of Welcome to Spotswood yes. that just came out. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Justin, thank you also for being on. I, think, oh, okay. I feel like... No, I've never been there, man. man. I feel like you were on it earlier yeah. before we were a part of this. Okay, Maybe. so let's talk about these wings, oh and then let's try to answer some questions as we do these wings. Oh, boy. Well, we gotta, like, eat a wing and then answer a question. That's how this works. Is it right? oat yeah. milk? Yeah. It's I have no milk. idea what's going on. This is going to be such a disaster. Oh my god, I'm so scared. I don't want, <laughs> I'm going to smoke all your nerds. any of this. Yeah, so, you are. So, Dave. Yes. Um, oh, you just man. reissued Spotswood. Yep. Um, it had come out. Give me dates because I out, was there at the uh, release party and I do not remember because that's how much I drank. It came out in October of 2017. Uh, and then we reissued it with a new song, The Way It Goes, 
uh, last December, December okay. 2018. So we're talking about like a year between the issue and the reissue. What changed in the album for you? Like listening back, going through the reissue, was it just a matter of putting it back out and adding the song? Was there work yeah. done to the production of it? Yeah, actually I have to give uh, uh, KL uh, credit on this. Um, yeah, it was his idea. Film. He felt that um, the album didn't... Uh, Nice. Okay, Dude. Justin, walk us through these. <laughs> uh, this one's pretty mellow, man. It's made from uh, Scotch bonnets. You want to just, you want to just. This is the we'll first one. This is the first one. Yeah. Oh, so Christ. what is it called? This is uh, Scotch right here. bonnets. No, bonnets. this is uh, High River sauce. It's from Sheba Gold. It's made from Scotch <laughs> bonnet peppers. All right, I'm okay. sorry. So KL came up with the idea of reissue. Yeah. Talk to me about Re that decision. Yep. Uh, we felt that it didn't get um, enough buzz. Okay. So we re-released it, and and I have to say the the streams and the numbers have been pretty good ever since we did. Thank you. Interesting. Um, so now you two, uh, you started working together around the time of the reissue, and I feel like mm -hmm. it's kind of become more of a collaboration between the two of you and the band. You talked about, I don't know, could we say on air that you're dropping the day when it's just going to become viewers like yep. you? Yep, Oh, official announcement? Is that official? Eventually, yeah. Eventually. Eventually. We're, we're, we're getting, getting there. We're getting there. So talk to me about going from someone who I know as a songwriter was very, you know, you work on your own, you bring mm -hmm. the songs. Most of the time when I was playing with you, the songs were totally done, and you brought mm -hmm. them to us. Versus bringing in someone to start collaborating with. Right. Um, well, I felt like. Yeah, that was it, totally fine, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it was pretty easy. Oh, it was sweet. Hi. I gotta get one of these. They look delicious. Or here, you can share mine. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You, you wanna? Is it's that? Is this like, all made? That's, that's really hot. Alright, cool. It's not hot. I, well, I don't think it's hot. Don't Sorry. touch your it's eyes. Yeah, don't touch your eyes. Yeah, which one's yeah, this don't one? Don't touch your eyes. This is uh, High River Rogue. This is uh, Maruba Scorpion Peppers. Alright, so talk to me about starting to work in a more collaborative way versus a normal way. Right, or well, the uh, solo way. Right. Well, I felt like, you know, as as much as I've been putting out on my own, um, there's a better way to word that. But nope. As, as much. <laughs> yeah. As, as much as Dave's been putting out lately. <laughs> <laughs> as um, no, but as much as I've been putting out on my own, I felt like it would be beneficial to have other musicians come in, put in their own input. Justin and I have been having <clears> some <throat> Lennon McCartney style. Uh, Writing sessions, yeah. and, and they've been pretty productive. They have been, yeah. They're fun. We're writing, uh, we've got a few coming out now. Like we've been working on a shorter EP, cool. which is now kind of developing more into a full length that we'll do. This um, sucks so much. Yeah. 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 Sorry. This really sucks. Uh, thank you. Well, um, you know, this, one, you know, this one's probably going to suck more. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone about your art can be a little bit painful. So if, <laughs> if we're all feeling the physical all pain, pain that I'm then. feeling inside right now. But I mean, you were also, you were also, you're a songwriter in your own. I yeah, know, you did a little bit. Like, what's it like starting to come in and kind of work on what that means to be a full like songwriter and working with someone else for you? Oh, it's fun, man. Um, the best stuff that you can come out with, I think, uh, wow, doesn't I really come out of a vacuum. It comes out of uh, working with someone else who you have. I uh, have similar tastes, similar interests, similar ideas on you know, so our writing process now is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, how many fun. wings do we have left? This, this is, is uh, the this third is one. Three of five. This is three of five. Okay, so this is the third one. You don't have to spicy. eat the whole thing. Oh, no. oh I've been eating the whole thing. It's like real, uh, a, a real episode. Like, you don't have to if you don't want to. You don't have, you don't have to. to if no. you don't want to. No. no. I'm, going to. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm definitely a little toasty. Yeah. What? Which one was this? Mm. This was uh, here. It's Born to Hula. It's made in Highlands, New Jersey. If anyone wants this, Oh, I put this on my tacos at the pickle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Rebecca always um, gives it to me. Let's go, really on to, let's go on to four out of five. Milk. Give me some of that milk. Let's go. You need some milk? Yeah. Yeah, baby. All right. Um, wow, no cow. Do don't eat this whole way. I'm fine, dude. Okay. So, uh, I did this this morning. Oh, so, Dave, right. I want to talk about the idea of... Um, Thank you. We've had a couple of different bands kind of pop up around you throughout the years. I yeah. feel like this is like the most solid lineup you've had mm -hmm. in a while. Finding that final sound live versus recording, what's that been like for you? Finding kind of the solid setup of what it is live versus when in the studio, it's a lot of just you doing your own thing, but you're kind of breaking right. out of that. So yeah, wow. now now everybody comes in, writes their own parts, and I have to say it's really made for a, not only a more cohesive sound, but a, a more natural sound. What gave you that release to let them do that? I just wanted to make better music, you know? Um, <clears throat> and Not terrible. That was a... Uh, Nope, never mind. That was <laughs> yeah, we got to. Oh man. Oh, that's that one. Will, that Which one, one was that? Yep. That's uh, oh, that wow. really this sucks. guy. Whoa. That really sucks. The bomb beyond insanity. Oh wow. I'm okay. going through all of these without taking. A I don't drink remember which one it was. This. this is a, a bad cow. idea. That one's really bad. That one's really really bad. I'm not happy. Mr. Kale Martin of three one four three artist management. It just tasted bad first, and now it hurts. Oh man, water just spreads, and I forgot. 
<laughs> Let's uh, do this last one. Um, yeah, oh. go, going into the I studio <laughs> together as opposed to what Dave was doing just by himself. Oh, God, was, my fucking nose. It's more fun, I think. We get a very different kind of sound than uh, your first No, oh, thank you. Like, yeah, no, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Okay. Nah, screw it. It's right. live. We gotta do this. What did we'll you do? These are, these are, yeah. Last one. <laughs> it's like hurting my teeth. Wait, hold yeah, on. Which one is it? Which one is it? Which one is it? Last, uh, last dab. Which Mad Dog 357. Yeah. If you oh, want, go ahead and put dog. an extra, extra dab on it. Oh man. Okay. Uh, oh, hi, I'm Grand Margera. You don't Grand have Margera. to if you don't want to. Ooh, that's that's a, that's yep. a good one. Whew, did Wait, it? Which, which that's terrible. That's so bad. Who cares? Extra dab. Uh, so Dave, I'm not doing uh, wrap it up because I might have to call an ambulance. Do you you got the new the single, The Way It Goes, coming out. You have a um, new recording coming out. You want to do a quick pitch, what we can yes. look forward to in the future? Uh, so Thursday, look for a new single called Hereafter. This Thursday? Yep. It's like going, a couple of days from now? Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's going to be the lead single. It's cool, man. On uh, KL's uh, 3143 compilation album. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you're going to enjoy it very much. I'm listening. Um, I'm going to enjoy it very much. You? I think you're going to enjoy more being done with doing this. Nope, because this pain <laughs> is going to last for the rest of the night. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Moody, Justin Franco, viewers <laughs> like you. Jack, you want to get set up while I do an ad read? You don't know Jersey, <laughs> baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Woo! One more, Chris. one more sponsored by You Don't Know Jersey, founded in 2010 by Allison and Mazia. You Don't Know Jersey has been bringing its readers all the best in Garden State sports, music, art, film, and culture for nearly a decade. Hey, KL, weren't you just asking about the p best place to go antiquing? I know you were. I overheard you. Don't lie to me. I'm not going to ever call myself daddy. <laughs> because you can find all that more within the digital pages of You Don't Know Jersey. So whether you're in Brass Castle, my nickname for Brian, Buttsville, Brian's nickname for me, or Bargain Town, our nickname for Matt Smith, visit YouDon'tKnowJersey.com. Because you just don't know Jersey. Really, you just don't. Oh my God, I'm salivating so much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Jack. I got to turn on the monitor. Very. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in hell. <laughs> no. It's off the EP 1123, which you can listen to on Spotify, wherever you get your music, iTunes. You can visit my website, it'll get you to where you need to be. Jackmusic.com. It's Jack with an H. <laughs> I like the fight, I bite it, only get faster I dig deep inside when I want to hide Fired up, my mission's on, nothing can drown me I'll explode, unfold, I finally found me I am most alive when I collide Kick it up at the start Run with all my heart And if you want to know Keep up and don't go slow Sight is on the stars And even if we don't get that far At least we might know The depths of our soul Well, torpedo Give me your best, I'll take you on And then I'll blow Whoa, torpedo If this is a 
test, then I won't rest until I blow. Racing through the paces, some say I should slow down. That's for them, I say, this is how I get around. Maps I drew, pulsating through. Aware and I don't care, it hurts so good it burns me alive. Come back for more, so sure I'll see you on the other side. And next time, I'll keep on trying. Kick it up at the start. Run with all my heart, and if you want to know, keep up and don't go slow. Sight is on the stars, and even if we don't get that far, at least we might know our passion and soul. Whoa! your best I'll take you on and then I'll blow well torpedo if this is a test then I won't rest until I blow whoa 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 Giving your best, I'll take you on and then I'll blow. Well, torpedo. If this is a test, then I won't rest until I blow. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Brought to you tonight by the Bordentown Guitar Rescue. Founded by certified luthier Mike Virock, Bordentown Guitar Rescue has been building, modifying, customizing, and repairing stringed instruments since 2012. I'm still dying. <laughs> <laughs> Why wait a month for a basic setup from one of the big retailers when Bordentown Guitar Rescue has the quickest turnaround time in the state? I'm not crying, it's just the peppers. <laughs> <laughs> So whether your body is warped, your neck is bent, or your bridge needs a new saddle, call certified luthier Mike Virock for an estimate. Bordentown Guitar Rescue. Fix it, Virock. Oh, what? Yeah, Jesse, you gotta stop. Oh, I thought you were doing announcements. Why would I? No, I gotta... It, you had a microphone and you were running up to the stage. We run a tight ship. We run a very tight ship here at One More with Brian Erickson. A scale of one to the worst ever. Yeah. How was that idea? Uh, how, oh, like, okay, it wasn't the worst. I had fun. And I also feel very proud of the fact that I... Uh, yeah, you did it all. Yeah, I abstained from the oat milk for uh, most of it. The oat milk did not help. It really didn't. It's My just water. My on fire. I went to the, the pizza restaurant next door and got salt. Did you really? I did. I did. It helped. Does the salt help? Yeah. Well, yeah, my mom is a mad woman and eats just jalapeno peppers, just bites into them. Don't screw with Vicky. <laughs> she knows pain better than anyone else. We're still biding time while Foxanne gets everything set Yeah, but that's where I learned the tip from. Uh, so, hey, how's everyone doing? Yeah, how's everyone three, doing? Three, three, four, some more wings. Huh? And I'm not, no, hell no. No, I will not. Brian, I I'm will the not. the worst at stalling. I'm just, I figured like. Brian, no, I appreciate did you, it. Where did you get? Did you get all the wings or no? No, I skipped the last one. Did I even really? did the yeah, final dab on the last one. No, that really. Yeah, yeah Jess, you dab. really went all yeah. in. Well, if we're going to do hot I'm ones, I'm not going to, you know, fuck, I'm not well, going to like. You can I mean, Foxanne was cursing up a storm before. I, well, ahead. I know, you, I guess. You say whatever you Well, I'm not going to wimp out and just not take the last wing. Yeah, hey, Matt. No offense. Hi. Who's this? Who is this? You've never been on camera before. He's He did an interview. Yeah, I just remembered. I got nothing here, folks. Well, I'm the yeah. one who interviewed him, which got him on the show. Is that a true story? That yeah. is a true story, yeah. That is a true story. Hey, what is that a pocket watch you've got there, Matt? Or is it just a chain? Are you happy for... to see us? 
the yes, hell? Yes, Michael Watson. No, I'm not happy to see you. He's never, never happy to see us. I know there's always going to be trouble. This is like one of those really bad morning talk shows. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> where they're just like grasping at every straw. Yeah, where's Al Roker? Uh, probably in New York. And here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. I, what's, what's I, that's all I had. Yeah. That was the last uh, last thing I had. Yeah, no, you did your best. Yeah. I'm still crying. I keep wanting to touch my face, and I know that there's peppers on it, so I'm like, ah. Taking out my contacts, they're just going to be hell. Do you want to do the intro? <laughs> and now, without further ado, <laughs> we give you Rock, uh, Foxanne. <laughs> you said Roxanne before. Hi, friends. Um, <laughs> If you missed the introductions, I'm Fox Sand. Um, and this is extremely new, this song, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Just standing there Won't you please stay Pull the car over I'm getting out Follow me, follow me
One more. Sure. I got songs. <laughs> um, this one we're going to be dropping soon, and I've been saying that for a hot minute, but this time it's true. <laughs> it's called Applause. Gentlemen, Fox, and that's the fa that's my favorite. That's so good. All right, I'm gonna yell a list of events. I'm probably gonna do it a little slower than normal because we have to set up a piano for Mr. Arlen Phyles. So, did I get it right? right? Yeah. All right, but I'm gonna introduce it. Hold on. Week of March 25th, Monday, March 25th. Happy birthday, Santa Rosolo of Jackson Pine, Terra Dente, and the Blind Pilots. Arlen, he plays for you, doesn't he? Yes. Yes, Santo, he's the absolute best. He's up in a Woodstock with Chels right now, living his dream. Uh, them fangs, Gustav and Francie Moon are at the Saint right now. Tuesday, March 26th, happy birthday, Emily from Dentist. Hell yes, brother. Jack, Jay Monday, and Alex Reducia. I call him Squitter at the Downtown Red Bank at 7 p.m. Ceramic Animals are at Johnny Brendan's at 8 p.m. Wednesday, March 27th. Happy birthday, Devin Lotta from Fake Pockets and Bonesaw from Leeds. I don't think I could love two people more in this world. 
Red Pants presents Dare to Forest, A Bird, and New Narratives at the Asbury Hotel. Hold on, I'm gonna turn off a monitor real quick. What are we doing? Uh, Thursday, March 28th, no birthdays. Matt Smith, when's your birthday again? I don't know. All right, great. Thursday, March 28th, Slaughter, Beats Dog, The Sidekicks, and Augusta Koch at AP Brewery at 7 p.m. Cold Weather Company, American Trappist, and Apollo Saunders at World Cafe Live in Philadelphia at 8 p.m. Friday, March 29th, happy birthday, Matt Daniels of Flexiglass, Earth Telephone, Party Muscles, and Pioneer the Eel, Eel or APYC at 9 p.m., Delta Sleep, Gleamer, Bogues, have a good season, to Man Dancing at the House of Independence at 6.30 p.m., Rachel and Dobkin, Desert Swagmanics, Connor Bracken, the Mother Leeds Band, and the Dead Ramblers at the Stone Pony at 7 p.m. It's a thankless job, Matt. Uh, group texts, groomers, and Greg Rikas at Mill Hill Basement at 9 p.m. Fake Pockets, we're ghosts now. Kevin Dunn at the Asbury Hotel at 9 p.m. Matt DeBrown, the captains, Casanova Kane, and little Uncle Kevin Daly at the Chubby Pickle at 9 p.m. Saturday, March 30th, second annual Asbury Park Women's Convention at Stone Pony at 10 a.m. Experiment 34, Implicit Bias and Justin Turk at Chiafano's Bar at 6 p.m. Jackie June, Corey Hiltman, and L. Buell at Pharmacy at 8 p.m. Sahara Moon, High Season, and writer of such hits as Take a Load Off Fanny and And You Put the Load, Put the Load Right on Me, Dave Vargo at the Asbury Hotel at 9 p.m. Sunday, March 31st, the Burns are at El Cortez in Brooklyn. Justin Pope hosts his open stage at Triumph in New Hope at 7.30 p.m. And close out your weekend at the Scarlet Pub with Flycatcher Feeney, Cabana Wear, and Sleep In at 8 p.m. And now, ladies and gentlemen, God, I hope I get the name right again. Give it up for Arlen Filas! <laughs> We could all sit down and rewrite the Constitution Or we could fight it out and start up a revolution and Either way is fine with me, still you refuse to see You're blind to a resolution Hold tight, we're gonna fight, yes I told you I hope you're with me, Viola We could take this song and scream it from ocean to ocean We could really set it off and start up a big commotion We take hands but we have forgotten that love is all we've got. I believe that I could show you. Hold tight, we're gonna fight, yes I told you. Stand tall, stand upright, you're a soldier. Head on shoulder to shoulder I hope you're with me, Viola Break these chains of silence Break these chains of violence
told you. Stand tall, stand upright, you're a soldier. Oh, you're a soldier. Gonna take this head on shoulder to shoulder. Hope you're with me, Viola. I hope you're with me, Viola. I hope you're with me. Thank you. Come. No, that's, you all come out. Everybody comes out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Arlen, don't leave. Yeah, come on. Don't leave. For Arlen Phyllis, Deirdre Forrest, Foxanne, Jack, Dave Mooney, Justin Franco, yeah. KL Martin, Jess Savino. Come on out, guys. Where's Andrew, too? Let's get Andrew here, too. Jesse McCormick, Chris Dubrow. Right? Oh, over there. Yeah, Jesse McCormick, Chris Dubrow, <laughs> Mogo, the Asbury Park Music Foundation. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, thank you, Jim Lenz Colt. Come on out, Jim. Why why doesn't Jim come out too? Come on, buddy. There it is. Oh wait, wait, wait. Wait, Chris, we 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 do you, uh, one more guest, right? And then we'll do the All right, I am, I have been, blah blah blah, Brian Erickson. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Trash Can Dan. Woo!